Hello everyone, welcome back. And today we will talk about the anatomy of deep muscles of posterior compartment of forearm. So, in our previous tutorial, we discussed the anatomy of superficial muscles of posterior compartment of forearm. And today, we will talk about the deep muscles of this compartment. So, just like the superficial muscles, the deep muscles are also five in number. And these are the supinator muscle, the abductor pollicis longus muscle, the extensor pollicis longus muscle, the extensor pollicis brevis and the extensor indices muscle. So, unlike the superficial muscles, the deep muscles does not have a common origin. Rather, these muscles originate from different areas of the posterior compartment of forearm. But these muscles have one thing in common and that is these muscles receive their innervation from the deep branch of radial nerve which is also called the posterior interosseous nerve of forearm. So today in this tutorial, we will talk about the deep muscles of this compartment. So let's discuss these muscles one by one. So our first muscle of discussion is the supinator muscle. So this muscle has got a broad spectrum of origin and it originates from the lateral epicondyle of the humerus the annular ligament of the proximal radio ulnar joint and the supinator crest of ulna as you can see and after origin the fibers of this muscle travel in ferrolaterally over the elbow joint and spiral over the proximal one third of radius to insert onto the posterior lateral and anterior aspects of neck and shaft of radius bone as you can see. So let's proceed towards the actions performed by this muscle. So the name of this muscle clarifies that this muscle is a supinator and this muscle supinates the forearm at the proximal radio ulnar joint. So let's move on to the second muscle of our discussion, the abductor pollicis longus, which is this long slender muscle. And if we talk about its origin, so this muscle originates from the posterior aspects of shafts of bones of forearm, that is the radius and the ulna bone, as you can see. And the fibers of this muscle travel down in ferrolaterally over the dorsal aspect of forearm and just superior to the wrist, these fibers give rise to a muscle tendon which crosses the wrist joint. And after crossing the wrist joint, this muscle tendon inserts onto the lateral aspect of base of first metacarpal bone, as you can see. Now let's move on to the actions performed by this muscle. So this muscle produces two important movements at the carpometacarpal joint. So the first movement that this muscle produces is very much clear from the name of this muscle, the abductor pollicis. So the word abductor simply means that this muscle is an abductor and the word pollicis is for the thumb. So simply this muscle abducts the thumb at the carpometacarpal joint. And the second movement that this muscle produces is the extension of the thumb at the carpometacarpal joint. And now let's move on towards the third muscle of our discussion, the extensor pollicis longus. So if we talk about the origin of this muscle, so this muscle has got its origin from the posterior surface of middle one third of shaft of ulna and the adjacent interosseous membrane of forearm. And after origin, the fibers of this muscle form a muscle belly which travels down in ferrolaterally and just superior to the wrist joint, this muscle belly forms this muscle tendon. And this muscle tendon then crosses the wrist and travels down towards the thumb 
and there it inserts onto the dorsal aspect of base of distal phalanx of thumb as you can see now let's talk about the actions performed by this muscle so this muscle performs a single action and that's the extension of the distal phalanx of thumb so simply we can say that this muscle extends the thumb at the distal interphalangeal joint and now the fourth muscle the extensor pollicis brevis so i decided not to remove the extensor pollicis longus so that you can visualize both the muscles at the same time and uh, differentiate between the positions of both the muscles so this one is the extensor pollicis longus which you can see is a long slender muscle while this one a bit short one is the extensor pollicis brevis so let's discuss about the extensor pollicis brevis muscle so now i removed the extensor pollicis longus so that i can tell you about the origin of the extensor pollicis brevis muscle so you can see that this muscle has got its origin from the posterior surface of distal half of shaft of radius and the adjacent interosseous membrane of forearm and then just like its fellow muscle the extensor pollicis longus the muscle fibers of the extensor pollicis brevis muscle also form a muscle belly which travel down in ferrolaterally towards the wrist and just superior to the wrist joint this muscle belly forms a muscle tendon and this muscle tendon crosses the wrist joint and travels down towards the thumb and inserts onto the dorsal aspect of base of proximal phalanx of thumb unlike its fellow muscle the extensor pollicis longus which inserts onto the distal phalanx of thumb now let's talk about the actions performed by this muscle so just like the extensor pollicis longus the extensor pollicis brevis muscle also extends the thumb and now we will discuss the last muscle of our today's tutorial the extensor indices muscle so if we talk about the origin of this muscle so this muscle has got its origin from the posterior surface of distal one third of shaft of ulna and the adjacent interosseous membrane of forearm as you can see after origin the muscle fibers of this muscle form this muscle belly which travels down towards the wrist where it forms this muscle tendon and at the wrist this muscle tendon travels deep to the extensor retinaculum of the wrist as you can see and then within the hand this tendon travels down inferolaterally to insert onto the extensor expansion of index finger as you can see now let's move on to the actions performed by this muscle so this muscle performs a single important action and that action can be learned by concentrating on the name of this muscle so the name of this muscle is extensor indices muscle so here the word extensor means that this muscle is an extensor and the word indices is for the index finger so simply this muscle extends the index finger at the metacarpophalangeal and interphalangeal joints and now lastly we will talk about the nerve supply of all these deep muscles of posterior compartment of forearm so as we pointed out earlier that these muscles receive their nerve supply from the deep branch of radial nerve which is also called the posterior interosseous nerve of forearm so that's a lateral view of forearm and you can see that this nerve is the radial nerve which gives off this branch the deep branch of radial nerve which is also called the posterior interosseous nerve of forearm and this branch supplies almost all the posterior muscles of forearm
So that was all about the anatomy of deep muscles of posterior compartment of forearm. So if you have any confusion in what we studied today, you can ask me in the comment section. Thank you so much.